Um, now let's transition from the fat cell and insulin resistance to talk a little bit about another highly metabolically relevant tissue, and that's the liver. Evidence suggests that fluoride exposure may contribute to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD. NAFLD matters um, because at that early stage of liver problem, it actually acts as a bit of a gateway where at first, what is just a fatty liver can become a fatty and inflamed liver. And then as the fatty inflamed liver state persists, it can then progress to a state of liver scarring. So to say all that very uh, technically, it would progress from fatty liver disease to NASH or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Remember, when you hear the itis suffix, that means that it's something's inflamed. So steatohepatitis, so fatty and inflamed. And then it would eventually progress, unless things change, to cirrhosis, which is when the liver is actually scarred. Just to put all this in, in proper context. Now, mitochondrial dysfunction in liver cells impairs normal oxidation of fatty acids, leading the liver to accumulate fat rather than burn it. In animal studies, fluoride exposure has been linked to liver inflammation, oxidative stress, disrupted lipid metabolism, in other words, promoting more storage than burning, all of which are hallmarks of fatty liver disease and a hint of worse problems to come. Now, a lot of the most recent scrutinizing of fluoride actually comes because of the evidence linking it to cognitive decline. So this is another area of increasing concern fluoride's impact on brain function. Several studies, including systematic reviews, have found that elevated fluoride exposure is associated with lower IQ scores in children. Now, that is all correlational, but fluoride may induce oxidative stress and inflammation in brain tissues. Also, something that's very relevant, but not really a focus of my lecture now, is the effects of fluoride on thyroid function. High fluoride consumption has been shown to disrupt thyroid function. Now, why am I even bringing up thyroid in the context of the brain? Because thyroid hormone is critical for not only brain development in the child, but also just maintaining brain function in the adult. Any pathology that involves the loss of the thyroid gland will include a disruption in cognition. So even in adults, in where we have brains that are fully formed, the person will become noticeably not demented, but forgetful and sluggish, lethargic in their thinking. Now, when you take that same disrupted thyroid production and put it in, in a child, then it becomes catastrophic, that there can be irreversible loss of intelligence and cognition. So there's a reason to scrutinize the evidence and the worries about thyroid uh, fluoride in the brain and most specifically perhaps some effect or some mediating function with regards to the thyroid gland but also with regards to the brain we have that the worry of compromised mitochondrial activity where the brain is an energy hog it needs to be producing a lot of atp to function well and in the lack in, in the absence of atp we have a bit of an absence in cognition now i don't i want to just touch on another point here which is the effect of fluoride on fertility this is a strange one, I know, but the evidence is actually quite strong here. And it's something that I think a lot about because I think so much about the family and the importance of the family as a unit within society. So a lot of my own kind of personal reasons to think about this, but also just I'm very mindful of people's struggles with fertility, people who want to start families and can't. Well, remarkably, fluoride does have a role here. Uh, research has pointed to fluoride's potential impact on reproductive health. In men, fluoride exposure has been associated with decreased sperm count, lower testosterone, and in impaired sperm motility. And in fact, in rodents, there's more of a causal effect where high fluoride exposure really does reduce sperm production. In women, um, high fluoride has been linked to menstrual irregularities and impaired ovary function in animal models. So there's, there's less direct evidence in um, women 
in humans, but in the animal models, there's a pretty strong evidence that females are susceptible to the effects of fluoride on fertility. Now, the where what these have in common is that these effects are believed to stem from the fluoride-induced oxidative stress and some hormone disruption. disruption. 